Welcome to lesson number 11. I'm almost sad that it's the last lesson of this particular course where we cover um, actual content regarding the Darabuka. Uh, well, regarding playing the Darabuka. So in this lesson, we're going to look at jumping between rhythms. So this lesson is really about putting things together, right? It's, it's about putting together all of the different things, the different concepts, the different ideas, uh, the different rhythms that we've learned, putting them all together and mastering them. Because... You may be able to play Maksum 2. You may be able to play Saidi 1. You may be able to play Heavy Saidi 2. But to jump between the three of them is hard. To jump between the three of them requires mastery of all three. Otherwise, you can't jump. Okay? Let me give you an example. Let's say I was playing, uh, let's say I was playing a rhythm. And I wanted to jump into a different rhythm. Uh, the rhythm I'm currently in is in a four beat cycle. So it's one, two, three, four. The rhythm I'm moving to is in a 10 beat cycle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would have to have mastered the four beat rhythm and mastered the 10 beat rhythm in order to jump between them. If I haven't mastered both rhythms, when I enter the 10 beat cycle, I'll be confused for a little bit. And I might be confused for 10 whole beats. 10 whole beats is a really long time to be confused. You shouldn't be confused for 10 whole beats. You shouldn't even be confused for one beat. Uh, but 10 beats is a long time to be confused. Unless you might say to yourself, oh yeah, you know, I can do that rhythm. It's just the first rhythm that I struggle with. If that rhythm is a 10 beat rhythm and you're struggling with the first rhythm, it means you're struggling with 10 full beats. That means you're struggling for... That's how long you're struggling. That's a long time to be struggling. Don't struggle for that long. Master the rhythms. So we're going to look at jumping between rhythms. So you have to master each rhythm. You have to have mastered each rhythm. We're going to look at how to jump between them. Okay. Now, what we have to understand, firstly, is the difference between basic and ornamented rhythms and to understand this differential gradient. Now, this differential gradient is what we looked at when we saw the doom and the tech. So let's think back to the doom and the tech. We have a doom and we have a tech, right? The doom is the deep and powerful bass uh, low pitch stroke. The tech is the sharp and high pitched tech stroke, okay? Um, so putting them together, you then get this gradient. You get deep and you get high, high and low, high and low, low and high, high and low. So you can make a rhythm based on these highs and based on these lows. The same is true with actual rhythms themselves. So you can have rhythms which are lower and you can have rhythms which are higher. You can have rhythms which are basic and you can have rhythms which are ornamented. Rhythms which are simple, rhythms which are advanced. What we have to do is we have to understand how to move between these rhythms. Let me give you a really popular use case, a really popular example. And this will help frame your thinking. So when you're playing, you know, say you're playing a song, right? Let's say you're playing a song. Let's say the song is a particular song where you are, um, you've got a chorus and you've got a verse. So you've got the chorus or the refrain, as, as whatever you wish to call it. You've got the chorus, the refrain, and then you have the verse, okay? The verse is going to be where the singer tries to showcase uh, their talents. The, the singer is going to try and show, showcase all of their amazing talents and all of the amazing things that they like, okay? So you're doing this, uh, you're doing this recording, you're playing the Darabuka, right? You're performing this song, you're playing the Darabuka. For the chorus, for the chorus, the chorus is when all the other musicians are going to join in. The singer is going to join in. Uh, the singer is going to be doing the chorus. All the audience is going to know the chorus. The other musicians are going to be playing the chorus really nicely and fancily and beautifully on their instruments. You want to get on that. You want to jump on the bandwagon and you want to play this chorus very nicely. How do you play the chorus very nicely? You play an ornamented version of the chorus, something lively, something upbeat, something fast, something with a lot of text. The text help the rhythm get more fast. They make the rhythm more exciting. They make the rhythm faster. So you want to move into something with text. So you want to go into with your chorus, you want to play like Maksum 2. So in Maksum 2, Dum Tek Ka Dum Dum Ka Tek Tek Dum Tek Ka Dum Dum Ka Tek Tek Dum Tek Ka Dum Dum Ka Tek. So it's a faster rhythm, okay? It's a more exciting rhythm. Then you come back into the verse. In the verse, the singer is doing a solo. The singer is going, Aman, Aman, Aman. If the singer is doing this kind of, uh, this kind of improvisation, they're doing the chorus, right? They're, uh, sorry, they're doing the verse, they're doing something beautiful. 
You don't want to get in their way. You don't want to get in their way. And you don't want to come in with a rhythm which is uh, impeding their rhythm. You don't want to come into come in with a rhythm which has too many texts in it. The texts are sharp. They're going to get on the singer's nerves. The singer's going to be trying to concentrate on his or her kind of beautiful, beautiful tafrid or beautiful kind of improvisation. And you're going to be getting in the way with your strong texts, which are, you know, tech, tech. They're kind of forcing their way into the, into the music. So you don't want to do that. You want to come in with a simple rhythm. You want to play doom, 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 tech. Doom, 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 tech. Doom, 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 tech. A nice, easy, simple rhythm. Heavy Saidi, just heavy Saidi one. So that's in your core, that's in your verse, right? In your verse, you're doing the heavy Saidi. Then when you come back into the chorus again, you go doom, tech, ka, doom, doom, ka, tech, tech, doom, tech, ka, doom, doom, ka, tech, tech, doom, tech, ka, doom, doom, ka, tech. And then you come back again. Doom, tech, ka, doom, doom, ka, tech, tech, doom, 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 tech. Doom 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 tak doom tak ka doom doom ka tak tak doom tak ka doom doom ka tak tak doom 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 tak doom 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 and tak. So we have to adapt our rhythm based on how fancy we want to make that rhythm. How fancy we want to where we are in the song, right? Where if we want to go faster, we want to go slower. Now it's really important to to bear in mind that there's no right or wrong answer. In fact, in some songs, you might actually want to go and down into the chorus. So in the chorus, you might want to make the chorus deeper, and in the in the verse, you might want to make the verse more exciting. I mean, I've played songs where it's been exactly like that, where in the chorus I actually go deeper, and in the actual song I I actually ornament more. Maybe not with one of these particular rhythms. I might ornament with a slightly different rhythm, but in the chorus I make it simple and I add more bass to it so that the bass shines through depending on the size of the room, the crowd, the event. I might make it a lot more deeper and bassier so that the bass comes through and makes more of a nightclub kind of, you know, a deep and bassy powerful sound. And then, and then in the chorus, I might I might go high, I might add more text, but I might control the text so that they roll over so that the chorus is more con- uh, the 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 verse is more kind of wavy and more rolly. So, it's specific to the situation and the scenario that you're in. Another point to mention here is you should use metronomes to time your switches. So when you switch between rhythms, as I said, you need to have mastered both rhythms. So you should use the metronome to switch between those rhythms. So you should play the metronome. The metronome is playing. The metronome is playing and you're going to switch between two rhythms. When you switch, you should be going at the same speed in the, in the new rhythm as you were in the previous rhythm. So let's say you go from Maksum 2 to Heavy Saidi 1. They should be at the same speed. It shouldn't be that the Maksum is faster and the Heavy Saidi 1 is slower. They should be at the same speed. You should get used to switching at the same speed. So that even when you make it faster, when you make it more exciting, you are still keeping the same speed, the same tempo. This is the sign of a good percussionist. And this will be really important in your learning and in your journey. Now, let's head over to the studio, and in the studio, we're going to work out exactly how we can do these different switches, what switches are available to us with the rhythms that we've learnt, and what kind of things you can practice in order to get this perfectly right. Okay, let's look at rhythm switches and how to switch between different rhythms. We're going to learn this through a series of drills. Practice these drills a lot, um, and if you just practice the drills, you'll really understand it, but you really need to practice these drills appropriately in order to get that. Let's go through the first one together. We'll go through a whole cycle of the first one together, just so you can get an idea of what we're doing here. You have to have mastered the original rhythm and the switched rhythm in order to switch appropriately, because you won't be able to seamlessly switch into a new rhythm unless you've mastered both of those rhythms. So let's do it an easy one. We're gonna start off with heavy Saidi. Heavy Saidi, we're gonna have the heavy Saidi as a doom 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 tech in its basic form and we're going to switch into its more advanced form doom doom ka doom doom ka tech tech we're going to do one of each so one of each rhythm switch three four doom 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 tech doom doom ka doom doom ka tech tech a doom Switch we've got is the maksum switch. So maksum starts doom tak doom doom tak, 
And we're going to switch into Doom Tek Ka Tek Doom Ka Tek Teka Three, four Okay, very good, very good. Now, the next one we've got is the Saidi switch. The Saidi, Saidi basic to Saidi ornamented. Again, three, four. And finally, we've got the ballady switch. The ballady is doom doom tek doom tek into doom doom ka tek doom ka tek tek a doom. Let's try it. Two, three, four. Okay, the next kind of switch that you can do, which I would recommend a lot, is an ornamented fourth bar, which means we play three standard bars and we ornament the fourth. We play three standard, we ornament the fourth. So if I play three Saidis and then ornament the fourth bar, it'll sound like this. Three, four. Saidi with an ornamented fourth bar. Okay, now the switches that we've practiced so far are switches within the same rhythm. Let's see if we can switch within the same family of rhythms. So we're going to start off in a heavy Saidi, and then we're going to go into an ornamented Maksum, which is actually a really difficult switch. You start off in a heavy Saidi, and you're going to go into an ornamented Maksum. Three, four. Let's look at a different kind of switch. So a different kind of switch would be switching between two ornamented rhythms uh, within the same family, but different rhythms. So for example, an ornamented baladi to an ornamented saidi. It would sound like this. Doom doom ka tek doom ka tek tek a doom tek ka doom doom ka tek. So the, the ornamented uh, baladi at the beginning has a doom doom at the beginning and the saidi has a doom doom in the middle. It's actually a really popular rhythm. It sounds like this. Three, four. Those rhythms, those rhythms were incredible. Those switches were incredible. You can use that a lot. You should practice that a lot. If I were you, I would spend a month or two just practicing those. In fact, I would uh, play some cool Arabic music tracks. I would play some tracks and I would try and practice those. I would play, I'll tell you one that I used to play a lot. I used to play uh, Boshrit Khair, uh, Boshrit Khair by uh, uh, Hussein Al Jasmi, I think is his name. I've forgotten. It's a very, very common, very popular Arabic song. Uh, really, it was top of the charts for a long time, especially back when I was practicing. It was top of the charts back then. Um, and uh, and I was playing. I was actually playing a much more advanced version than than the rhythms that we've just learned. But I was actually practicing along with Boshrut Khair because it's really fast. It's a fast version of Maksum. 
Maksum is played all the way throughout. Oh, if you can keep up to speed with that, you're a good Darbuka player. You are a good Darbuka player if you can keep up to speed with that song. I struggle to keep up to speed with that song. I can do it now. But uh, back then, I used to struggle a lot to keep up to speed with that song. Anyway, we've learned some amazing rhythms. I hope you're now thinking to yourself, I've learned a very awesome suite of rhythms that I can I can use and utilize for whatever purpose that I need them to. And remember, we've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to come. There's so many more things that you can learn. You should be excited at this point in your journey where you are thinking, I'm ready to bring on more. I'm ready to take in more information. I'm ready to improve and move to even the next level because there's so many more levels after this. I'm really excited for you to be where you are in this point in your journey. Anyway, we'll finish there for this lesson. I hope that was beneficial. I will see you in the next video where we close things off and we look at where we're going next. And until next time, take care.